Pakistan is not an easy country uh, to uh, uh, deal with the economy. He has been uh, fighting a number of multiple battles on many fronts. And one of them has been uh, having uh, done very realistic reforms. There were uh, some really bad signs in the economy, which was uh, verging upon a crisis. So two things I would like to share with you is that we had basically deficits of historic magnitude, both on the external front as well as the domestic front. And the historic failure of Pakistan in not being able to integrate with the world economy was on full display. Because uh, in the past five years or even uh, you know 10 years, uh, the country had failed to generate export growth. Or just before uh, this government came in, the growth rate of exports was 0%. In fact, was negative. And at the same time, a policy, uh, a, a bizarre policy of trying to keep the dollar uh, cheap was followed. And a lot of money was spent. A lot of foreign exchange was spent to try and preserve dollar at a cheaper level, which had a consequence both of depleting the foreign exchange reserves and at the same time allowing the import-export gap to become uh, historically high, almost approaching $40 billion. And the current account deficit was also at its highest level at $20 billion. The topic you have chosen is very relevant today, that of stabilizing the economy through realistic reforms. This is always a very daunting task. But in the current situation of COVID-19, which has threatened the world economies and is still not under control in many countries, the task of maintaining or achieving macroeconomic stability is perhaps the most difficult one that any country or any government has, has found itself. I would go and say till as the, perhaps the Great Depression of the late 30s. So we shifted the policy focus because historically Pakistan in 72 years one of its historic failures has been the inability to generate exports in a fundamental way. So we shifted the focus away from a free flow of uh, all sorts of imports towards a policy of exports. And in that, we gave the business community a lot of incentives. We gave them uh, subsidies on loans, subsidies on electricity, subsidies on gas, uh, no taxes, of any sort and a refund regime so that they could go out and explore markets on somewhat, uh, you know, better terms. And uh, because the rupee also had uh, depreciated, it was a more conducive environment for exports. The recovery that we have seen in the month of July post COVID and the stock market. But today, if the stock market has witnessed 40% surge, then many of the scripts which were privatized and which were listed at the, at the stock market were in its own era. And I was very pleased to be part of his team. So I know that how he worked very hard in attracting the foreign investors at that time and also getting those entities listed. Macroeconomic stabilization or macroeconomic stability is a prerequisite for entering a stage of high, sustained, and equitable growth. Pakistan was, during 1960 to 1990, amongst the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, according to the World Bank data and statistics. Unfortunately, over the last 30 years, we have neither had growth, nor have we been able to achieve macroeconomic stability, 
and nor have we been able to get onto a path of sustained economic growth. Interest rates that uh, government was a bit slow in bringing those down, but then there is another thought that the pensioners are suffering because the rates has gone down and their standard of living is not up to mark. I try not to talk too much about the interest rates and the exchange rate because they are more so in the domain of the state bank. But generally speaking, if the interest rates are high, then the borrowers have a problem. But if the interest rates are too low, then the savers have a problem. And a lot of people, especially uh, those who are retired and get money in pensions and so on, they suffer when the interest rates are too low. Uh, the important thing is that we have to strike a good balance between the needs and aspirations of the uh, borrowers and the requirements of the savers, and also where the state of the economy is at that moment. You know, really, we need to unshackle the economy. Really unshackle the economy, and like you did when you were the privatization minister, we must hasten up the private, uh, uh, privatization. That is a central thing. 